like to all call the meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. Would the Planning Director please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Here. Alderperson Boren? Here. Ryan Sazma? Here. Jerry Jones? Here. Here. Marilyn Montemeyer? Here. Dave Hoffman? Here. And Don Sviton, I believe, is absent, so we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is introduction of committee members and staff. Dave, you want to start? Uh, Dave Hoffman, assistant member. Mike Vandersteen, mayor and chairman. Chad Pelishek, planning director. Steve Soklowski from the planning department. Carolyn Montemayor, citizen representative. Uh, Ryan Sazma from the public works. And online. Uh, Alderman Jim Boren of the 10th district. I'm the alderman on the plan commission. Jerry Jones, Vice Chairman and Citizen Member. Thank you. Does anybody have a potential conflict of interest with any of the items on the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll move ahead. Uh, the minutes uh, from the Planning Commission meeting on July 14th are before us. Is it, accept the motion to approve. So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next is items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application by the Plymouth Lubes Company LLC to create additional tenant space in their facility located at 3208 Washington Avenue. Steve, turn it over to you for a report. All right, thanks Mayor. Uh, Dave Addy is here, as well as uh, architect, architect Mark Fowler, who's working on this project with Mr. Addy. Um, Plymouth Lubes has been at the site since 2001 and has been providing superior products and outstanding customer service. Uh, they offer a wide variety of lubricants all backed by extensive warranties and product guarantees and they serve Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, uh, parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and Missouri. Um, Plymouth Lubricants is uh, uh, presently utilizes the entire facility along with um, a company called Industrial Fluid Solutions, and Industrial Fluid Solutions is an operated subsidiary of Plymouth Lubricants. Though, so right now they're using the first and second floors and the warehousing space. Diamond Graphics has been in the city of Sheboygan since 1915, and right now they're working with uh, Plymouth Lubricants to locate their facilities in uh, the 3208 Washington Avenue. So basically what we have is we have uh, uh, Mr. Addy looking to create uh, some additional uh, tenant spaces in his facilities because they have space available. And so Diamond Graphics is, has been here for a long time. They do a lot of business in terms of uh, uh, graphic design, business cards, letterhead, and stationery. And they've worked with Mr. Adi to try to utilize 3,800 square feet of the 36,000 square feet in the, in the facility. So there's an opportunity to partner up and have them come in there. Um, the only site improvements that we're looking at is the south side of the site along Washington Avenue. And you can see from the map that right now that area is all grass in between the uh, driveway and the building. Uh, uh, it, the Plymouth Lubes is going to be in this section uh, that you can see on that west end. And so what the applicant is proposing is to construct eight parking spaces in that area, which you can see um, on this particular uh, site plan, they would be coming in from Washington Avenue and then heading one way east 
in front of that space with those diagonal parking spaces and what that allows is for the people of Diamond and who are utilizing that office space in front to have the parking right uh, adjacent to their new tenant space. In addition to that tenant space, um, there is the, uh, the applicant is gonna construct a new entrance canopy, which will match the uh, uh, canopy, I think that's probably f a little bit further down. Um, it will match the existing canopy that uh, is presently at the southeast corner of the facility. I don't know if it's any further. Keep going just a little bit more. There we go. So it's gonna it, if uh, this it's a similar design concept, and this will uh, now be constructed on that south side to uh, define the area that Diamond employees are coming into. Um, other comments would just be that uh, the existing driveway that we were taking a look at is a little closer than five feet to, to the actual property line. However, the new parking spaces do meet that requirement. Um, there was some discussion about Diamond maybe bringing a, a, a sign. Uh, they were located in the old business park and uh, uh, talking about maybe bringing their sign on over. That's something that Diamond will just have to talk to staff about when, when they're ready for that to occur. Um, the only other minor comment is if, yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, and this was just for Mr. Adi, and it's not that big of a deal, but at the um, northwest corner of the building, there's just a little bit of outdoor storage. So we were just hoping that if there was anything that was out there that could either be removed or brought inside, that would be great. So staff is recommending approval of the uh, conditional use subject to the conditions you have before you, and I can answer any questions and the applicants are here. Thank you very much, Steve. Mr. Adi, would you like to add anything to that? No, Steve did a great job. Okay. So, I mean, really at the bottom line is we're looking to rent out 3,800 square feet that sat vacant for how many years? Now we finally have a tenant, a local tenant, and we'd like to rent that to them. And we do have a accepted lease subject to getting the permits. Very good, thank you. Commissioners, any questions? Any Mayor, more? Alderman Boren, I would uh, make a motion to approve subject to conditions. Thank you for that motion, Alderperson Boren. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. One last call for any discussion. Seeing none. You want to take a roll call? Sure, we'll take Mayor. A roll call vote. Mayor. Mayor. Aye. Alderperson Boren. Aye. Ryan Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. And Dave Huffman. Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Congratulations. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Item 3.2 is a conditional use application by Vern Kittler and Natalie Mieselitz to operate uh, Sol and Nova at 1133 Michigan Avenue. Steve. All right, well the applicants are here as well as uh, Kurt Davis who uh, is with Abacus Architects who's working on the project and is the owner of uh, the property we're talking about today. So uh, people may recall that this has been um, uh, Chevegas and what was the one after Chevegas? Barcode. Barcode. So we're taking a look at this site. It's been vacant for a little bit of time. The applicants are here today looking to operate a new diner, restaurant, and coffee shop, as well as a music venue. And so what we're talking about is um, they're looking at providing food that's locally sourced with an innovative and modern approach on classic food cafes. Um, talking about current brunch menus, current lunch menus, <coughs> coffee shop, um, and I might let you speak to the types of things you might look, be looking to provide as far as menu. Um, in addition to the uh, food, we're also taking a look at uh, having a music venue. And so what we're talking about there, it will be a music venue that would provide a larger music venue feel on a smaller scale. Uh, they aim to offer a venue that will provide their patrons with an experience that goes further than the normal uh, live band uh, bar experience. 
In addition, one of the things uh, they would like to do is also there's some space uh, both inside and outside where they would like to cater to local artists and hold art events where they would be, the goal would be to work with the artists and have their art hung on the walls and be sold out of their location as well. Um, one of the uh, things that really attracted them to the area is the outdoor space right off of Michigan Avenue, and they're hoping to completely utilize that space, um, want to uh, use it as often as they can, and the outdoor space truly has great potential to be a hotspot for gatherings, uh, whether it's people just coming for lunch, doing homework, gathering for meetings. It's just a nice spot along Michigan Avenue. And so they're looking at doing some improvements along there that would include removing of the fence that you presently see in the picture and trying to do more of a block wall with maybe some counter space. And, and when there's a video we'll go to that, I'll give a, a nice impression of what they're trying to accomplish with the, the property. Um, other than that, um, you know, there's whether or not the plan commission would want any specifics on the construction of the fencing materials, any ideas in terms of uh, uh, the outdoor uh, furniture, anything of that nature. One of the things, um, the only thing that uh, staff would call out to the plan commission is they do kind of show the, the Sola Nova portion of the sign that's been previously on the arbor. Not sure we've been trying to get away from the panel signs and whether or not, you know, some of the things we've been trying to do is get some individual letters and whether or not that might look cool instead of a panel, maybe doing something that way, that's something that we've been trying to uh, have done as well. So other than that, staff, uh, uh, it, you know, at 1133 Michigan has been vacant for a little bit of time, and the proposed Solo Nova restaurant music venue appears to fit the neighborhood in this section of Michigan Avenue well, so staff is recommending approval uh, subject to the conditions you have before you. Thank you very much, Steve. Werner, Natalie, would if, you like to if, add anything to if, that? Before you go forward, let's <clears throat> just watch the video. Okay. <clears throat> So I think everyone gets a nice little feel in terms of what they're looking at, um, gives a nice sense of what they're trying to accomplish and where they're trying to go with Sol and Nova. Thank you. Would you like to add any other comments? Thanks. Please step to the podium. <clears throat> So a little bit more on the food that we're going to be offering at Solanova. Um, I've worked at Springdale Farms out of Plymouth for uh, as many years as I can remember. I've been out there since I was a child. So I have a really good relationship with a local organic farm. So we'll be getting a lot of local produce in as well as working with like Nature's Best and other local businesses to bring in some locally sourced produce and yeah, just getting some some healthy food into Sheboygan. And I want to take, I currently work as the sous chef at Bomali's. So I, I really just want to take my innovation and my modern approach to cafe foods that we all know and sandwiches and just and just take a new modern approach on it and bring it to a, a healthy light in Sheboygan. And then as far as the outdoor space, with the way that everything is going right now in the world, there's not a really a lot to do without special accommodations. And this could just really be a real positive and good place for people to come regularly without having to make special accommodations. There's plenty of room outside equal if not more than what there is inside. Thanks for that information. Yeah. Appreciate it. Commissioners, any questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, Mayor, this is Alderman Bourne. I have a question. Go ahead, Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in reading over the proposal, I see that uh, alcohol is going to be served on the premises. Are you going to be applying for uh, just a beer and wine or also a liquor license? And then my follow-up follow question is then, would I imagine attracting a lot of different age groups there, how are you going to patrol your premises 
uh, you know, to guard against minors being served. Thank you. We've already applied for the liquor license and we'll go for the beer and wine at some point, I imagine. But part of the wall in the front is to limit the access to the building without us being able to allow you in. And that's really the largest part of why we want that, that barricade in the front. So there will also be like a fence there as well. Chad? Older person born at the last LHPS license hearings in public safety meeting, they did presentations for an open license and the committee awarded it to uh, this operator. So they do have the license for the full liquor. Okay, great. Um, Marilyn? Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Springdale Farms and Bull Malley, that's some good credentials. I uh, wish you good luck. I'd like to make the motion to approve. Thank you. Is that with conditions? Second. Was that motion with conditions? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay. And then we have a second. Yes, uh, any other discussion on the motion? David? Uh, yeah, I'm just interested. You're, I see you're going to be having uh, some live entertainment. Is that strictly going to be indoors? It can be. Okay. We're going to have a, a structure built on the inside for like a stage and possibly yeah. like a raised seating. Oh, that sounds good. I, I just was, was curious as to, you know, your transition from the restaurant part of it into the nighttime part of it. Uh, so you're not planning on, on having music in the outdoor area. Is that correct? Not, no. No. Not okay. Necessarily. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. If there's no other questions. Mayor Vandersteen. Aye. Older person born? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. And Dave Hoffman? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Thanks, guys. Sounds yeah. like it's going to be a lot of fun. Item 3.3 .3 is RO number 45 of 2021 and GO number 15 of 2021 from the Sheboygan Christian School filing a petition for direct annexation by unanimous consent for land currently located in the town of Wilson on Greenfield Avenue. Steve. I'm not sure, is anyone here from Sheboygan? Hi. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Could you just be able to introduce yourself to us, please? Sure, my name's John Warmus. I am uh, the director of uh, finance at the school. Welcome. Thank you, John. Um, so what we're taking a look at is you can see from the map, um, there's a portion of property that is presently in the town. And that is the section that you can see of property in the orange on the map, the aerial map in front of you. Um, presently, the I, I think uh, Chris, Sheboygan Christian School has two homes on there. And then there's another gentleman who uh, owns the property to the south who they w uh, were working together with the school to obtain a portion of his property. So there was a little bit of land, land swapping and things like that. And, and uh, the school has done that. They've elected to annex this portion of property because in the next, probably the next meeting potentially, uh, the school intends on submitting a conditional use permit for a new addition. And they wanted this property to help them meet some of the setbacks and things of that nature and utilize that property as part of that school addition. So staff was recommending that the city uh, um, uh, Council or the plan commission and council approved the annexation as submitted. Thank you very much, Steve. Chad. One thing to note is uh, the finance committee also had a referral of this document and took the matter up last night. Since this property was annexed as a residential property, it had property tax payments against it. Um, it will become exempt should the school apply for an exemption in the future. But at this point, there is some taxes, so the Finance Committee has approved the uh, annexation with the understanding and um, agreement that the school would reimburse the city because by state law we have to pay the town the difference of the town taxes for five years. So the city would pay the town taxes and then the school would uh, be required to reimburse us. It's not much, 3200 bucks, I think, for the five years. Okay, thank you for that information. Would you like to add anything to the presentation? Right. 
Jerry. John? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, no, I would just say that this is, uh, you know, like you had mentioned, is that this is like a first step uh, in, in many. And uh, so we were really anxious to get this moving so we, we can move forward to our uh, unified campus being the only K through 12 campus in Sheboygan County. So this is a, a big, big move for us. Very good. Commissioners, any other questions or motions? I make a motion to approve with the staff recommendation. Second. Thank you for Second. the motion. Alderman Bourne. Too late. Marilyn, did you have a comment? I, I do, I do. Uh, maybe I wasn't paying attention. What timetable do you have and what are you going to do with the building on Geely? On Geely, um, our, inten uh, our intention is to sell it. Um, we have a couple of uh, in, in prospective buyers. The big problem has been is when, to your point, is when our timetable is. Uh, currently, uh, we are hoping to break ground as soon as we get approval. Uh, obviously, the current state of, uh, I'm smiling under here, but obviously the current state of both uh, COVID and um, schools uh, has left us in a little bit of a review standpoint. But as it stands today, we anticipate to move forward to break ground yet this uh, fall so that next year in school we could be in a unified campus uh, out at uh, Greenfield Avenue. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mayor Alderman Boren. Go ahead, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, Christian High School is in my District 10, uh, Ward 26, and uh, this is going to be an excellent addition to that property. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other discussion, would uh, Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Older person Boren? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Thank John, you very John, much. Could you spell your last name for me, please? Sure. W A R M as in Michael U S. Thank you. Thank you all for your work. Thanks for day. coming tonight. Item 3.4 is RO number 44 of 2021 and GO number 14 of 2021 by Alderperson Ackley, granting showcase painting and drywall and its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of That's unimproved good. alley and um, in block one of Platt of Lawndale addition located east of North 18th Street in the city of Sheboygan for the purpose of installing an air conditioning unit and ventilation ducting. Steve. All right, um, Michael Gal Galabrizi is here uh, representing Showcase Painting and they're located at 1919 North 18th Street. And I'll probably have you kind of talk maybe a little bit more about the mechanicals in just a minute, Perfect. please. Um, so sh uh, Showcase Painting and Drywall, just go down a little bit, um, is looking, would you mind getting to the actual uh, pictures? <clears throat> a little bit more, one more. So that one's perfect. So um, what they're looking at doing is adding a couple of uh, uh, certified paint spray booths, which you can see in the photograph, that's uh, what they're doing on the interior. And so in order to do that, there's some venting that's gonna be required. And if you just go up to that picture a little more, you can see that that was the vent and that's the unit that's going to be going on the building. Could you go to the alley, please? No, that one photo of the alley. So what, what they're taking a look at is uh, in order to put those spray booths, they're putting them on the north wall. And you can see on the photo, the aerial photography before you, the orange line represents the property for showcase painting. And the blue line represents the unimproved alley that lies between their property. And I can't remember the business to the north. But who's to the north? Uh, Prestige Motors. So, so uh, basically what you have is you have that unimproved alley. It's all grass, as you can see. And so they're looking to locate these units kind of where the red dots are on the map um, uh, because that's where the spray booths are going to be. Um, one of the discussion points was, hey, could we vacate that alley? And the answer is no, because there's a 42-inch storm sewer that runs in that area. So that's the reason why the applicant is requesting uh, the ability to encroach with the spray booths. 
Um, uh, they are going to have some stacking, and it is venting, and it is uh, uh, venting some particulates in the air. Uh, I'm sure uh, Michael can speak more about that, but the owner appears to be well aware of this and is designing the units to properly address those concerns. And the only other item is that they'll, they'll, uh, the units will be sticking up a little bit about the building, but I think the applicant has indicated that they'd be about two to three feet above the roof line, and they're in that kind of area, alley area in that back, so they're really not seen. So staff was recommending approval of the encroachment request. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Would you like to add anything to his report? Um, I apologize, it's a little confusing. So some of the information represented is, is close. So in the blue area, that is where I'm looking to have the exhaust stacks come out the side of the building and go up. So where the city alley is, the only thing I'd be doing is, is taking out the side of the building there, starting at seven feet in the air and then being directed up. In the back of the unit, or the back of the building, if you go up to that picture, I'm adding two units. That's our existing air conditioning and heating unit. And I'm looking to put the other units over on that new pad. So that is completely invisible from the front of the road. So really the only thing you're gonna see from the road is the exhaust stacks. That is a makeup air furnace that specifically takes fresh air from outside, runs it through the paint booth, and then out the exhaust stack so the pressure of the building is not completely thrown out of whack. And so for the, for the health of my employees as well, we have full exhaust so the building doesn't stink and uh, cause an OSHA issue. Okay, thank you very much for that information. Commissioners, any other discussion or motions? I had a question, uh, Mayor. Please go ahead, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when I read this over, I didn't see anything in there that uh, addressed any possible noise issues. Is, is the noise gonna be mainly inside the plant or will there be noise uh, coming out of the stacks that would be noticeable in the neighborhood? Uh, you will definitely not notice the noise from the exhaust stacks. Uh, the, the makeup air units, when they are used, which is primarily going to be the during the day will be similar to your home furnace, but probably multiply that about by about three because they're about one and a half million BTUs. Any other Thank questions? You. Very good. Any other discussion? Entertain a motion. So moved to approve. Subject to staff recommendations. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. One last call for discussion. Seeing none, please call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen. Aye. Alderperson Boren. Aye. Ryan Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. Dave Hoffman. Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Very good, thank Mayor, you. Mayor, could I make one comment? Please go ahead. Uh, just so you know, Mike, uh, the plan commission uh, makes a recommendation to council. So this still has to go to the common council for the formal approval of the encroachment itself. So that'll be uh, this coming Monday on next, the 17th. Next, next Monday. Is there anything else I need to do? Uh, no, I would, you know, if you want to attend, obviously that's something, you know, we'd encourage, but it'll take place on Monday the 17th. The 17th. Yeah. Six o'clock in this room. Yes. Seven o'clock next Monday. Six. Yeah. Six o'clock. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next is adjournment. Jerry. Uh, I feel like I'm on tape delay here. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Thank you, Chair. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.